November 3rd, 2019, you walked onto Hockey Field. My life changed forever. For the first time ever, it was a new, it was an Olympic qualifier again. New qualification system, you basically played a two-legged game. We're in London playing against Malaysia. Can't remember the exact scores. Had a bang on the head since then. Uh, but we, we were winning quite well on day one, I think. Well, maybe 3 or 4-1, but we just needed to go and put the game to bed. So I think I, I got badly fouled in the first couple of minutes, won a penalty stroke. I scored a really nice goal, shot from the baseline. Normally quite frowned upon, but scored a lovely goal there. A little chip, right? He's literally a shot on the baseline, a little dink over his shoulder, oh, beautiful. Just, and then uh, scored a penalty corner early in the second half. Basically, we've qualified for the Olympics. We're living the dream. I am flying. I'm running around. Home, I'm really the home crowd, full crowd, going mental. 20 minutes to go. Never forget it. Ropes gets the ball, shoots, keeper makes a save. I was at the near post, decide I'm going to get to the far post. Teammates trapped it, and I know him really well. Close mate of mine, absolute legend. Uh, and he's more likely to trap it and push it a goal. I was like, do that. I'm going to get to the far post, and I'm going to basically try and just guide it if I can get in front of the goalie just in, because it's going to be a quick snapshot. He traps it and absolutely whacks it. And I have not thought about that. He's struck me square in the left-hand side of the face. Um, he has sheared off my eye socket. I've obviously kind of still standing, semi tried to get out of the way, dropped to the floor. Now tried to get up as quick as possible. It felt like three seconds from getting hit to being pushed over. I was being pushed over by the doc and the physio. Um, I think they're definitely being put putting in some sprint work for this because how they got on that quickly, I don't know. Um, they're pushing me over and I'm like, I'm fine. Just get me off the pitch. They're like, we need to check your neck. We need you. You've been struck on the head. So I'm very aware I've been struck on the head. My parents are 40, 50 yards away in the crowd. Just get me off this pitch. Like, I don't think there could be anything worse as a parent. Can you imagine blood is flying everywhere out of my face. You're lying on the floor. If I'm down there for a fair few minutes, imagine sitting watching that. I was like, just get me on. I remember standing up, being given a piece of gauze to like apply loads of pressure on the side of your eye where the cut is. So we know nothing that's going on right now. So I am forcing as much pressure as possible on this cut on the side of my eye <sighs> while making little yelping noises and saying, I can't cope. I'm getting lightheaded. Just get me off quickly. I've walked off with their guidance. We've got into the uh, medical room inside. We've got the doc in there with me, the physio's gone back out in case anyone else gets hurt. The performance director, he's sat already. He's somehow come out of the stands, got down, and obviously realised that things aren't great. He sat there on the bench waiting for me. And I've, I've walked in, sat next to him. All I can see is blood through my left eye. Fuzzy as hell. I feel dazed. And he just went, don't look in the mirror. Obviously, instantly. Stand up, look in the mirror. I've just got a whole indentation of ball shape in my head but everywhere else is swollen my head's massive i just said text this number and i said i don't know whose it is mums or dads but just text it and say sam is fine that's all i want you to do he then rings them and says he's all right anyway day in this time i've managed to get out of the stand the security in the building won't let them through the back end they're like my son's been smashed in the head like they've had nothing but major issues getting through apparently luckily one of the event staff knows mum and dad and would like to the south land for a quick. By this time, they wheeled me into an ambulance, sat me in the ambulance. I just remember looking out of the ambulance door as mum and dad have walked down the stairs up to me. I gave mum a big hug and mum, you can imagine, wow, looks absolutely broken. And dad, mum steps out of the ambulance, dad steps in, gives me a big hug and I just say to him, I will be fine. Look, I'm still standing, I'm good, doesn't matter, I will be fine. He says, sure, well then, yeah, he went. That's it. And that was enough for us to have had that acknowledgement. I'm fine. Since, obviously, I found out they got straight in the car, drove two and a half hours, both cried their eyes out the whole way home. Not a clue what's going on. I can't use my phone. I can't see. I'm all over the shop. I've decided to start record. They say you can't use my phone. I can't see properly, but I've managed to learn how to video. So I've sent a video to the whole squad while completely on another planet, I must have been. In utter shock. I remember a FaceTime with George Pinner, who, he's at, who was the GB Gommel at the time, and he also plays on the club side with me, who's like, are you all right, mate? Obviously realised back in the ambulance, oh dear, no. Like, we're shouting at each other, we're going to the Olympics. That was kind of that conversation, and that was that. Off we trot to, to the hospital. Um, I remember then starting to struggle, I hadn't really had any pain relief, they wanted to get me to hospital. Uh, I'd been pre-warned because of my humour. Staff have been working a long day. Probably don't need to hear any sample sarcasm right now. Nurse walked straight in, first comment. Probably shouldn't head a hockey ball, should you? My instant response was, you don't 
say, do you? To add up to turns around and went, that was what I was talking about. So I'll never forget it. And I'm crying with laughter like, she deserved it. And uh, Doc was like, yeah, I'll, I'll give you that one. Probably a silly comment. Got whipped into a, to a scan. And uh, I'm now, obviously, I'm morphined up. I'm, I'm getting some pain relief. I'm chatting absolute rubbish to everyone. And apparently, I've come out of the scanner. Doc's like, what's he done? I'm like wailing with laughter. I think it's the world's funniest thing. I'm now finding it so funny that I've just said, does it look like I've been in a car crash? They're like, well, actually, yeah, it does. Your face is in numerous pieces. So I think it's really funny now. It's not funny at all. Doc, we've been whipped away into a side room. Doc's come in and said, look, like just a pre-warning. You might have to have emergency sur surgery tonight. Someone's on their way. They need to check your eye. Anyway, they came in. They said, no, we think it's all right. We can't see what's going on behind the eye because of swelling. In the middle of all this as well, they've had to dilate the right pupil. So now I am fully blind for a bit. Quite entertaining. I am getting the doc to go on my phone hold the voice note and I'm leaving voice notes reply to all sorts of people. Yeah. Can't see a thing. So also I'm chatting absolute rubbish because I'm I've obviously all I'm asking for is a McDonald's. I've sent the team managers now has gone to try and find me a McDonald's and come in with a local sandwich. We don't really let down. What let down. Which now I'm upset about. It gives it me and then we realise that actually I fractured down here. I'm, I'm like, why'd you ask for me to move it? Well, obviously I couldn't buy it because it was broken like just below my nose as well. Like there was so many fractures, so many places. I basically then have a full night in a hospital, which was the weirdest night. The guy next to me was chained to his bed to police man. Like it was crazy. There was a guy came in. I actually wasn't having a nightmare. A guy was stood at the end of my bed staring at me. I had to keep pressing the red button. I don't know what in, but he'd come in at like 2 a.m. I obviously can't sleep. I am all over the shop. The boys are out celebrating. So I'm just leaving them voice notes, chatting rubbish. I have also now have thousands of WhatsApps. So I've decided 2, 3 a.m. in the morning. I now can see again. So I now think it's the right, out my right eye. So I decided that now was the right time to reply to every man and his dog. Interesting night, up all night. And then basically got like whisked away to home the next day in the afternoon. So kind of, I needed all the swelling to go down before I had the surgery that obviously was to remove my face and repair everything. So pretty wild, 24 hours. Yeah, it's just mixed emotions. Probably was being told that everything would be all right. I was like, I really can't see out my eye, but they were like, it will drop out. You just got to sleep upright for six, eight weeks and hopefully it'll gradually drop out. And even the early doors, the fluid was. So went back, uh, stayed at family friends, actually. They looked after me to make sure I got people around me full time. Had surgery, came around. I was in for only a day. I came out the next day. Obviously, you can imagine 31 staples over the top of your head, stitches all the way down. Ev couldn't go anywhere. Everyone wants to stare at you. I'm obviously like, just like, it's just normal. It's on my head. Everyone who looks is like, oh my word. I obviously put it on Instagram. People are like, this can't be real. I was living it. I was I was fine. I was I was finding it quite amusing. How did I at this point? How was your vision? So this is a bit like fluid had dropped out a bit. So I lost full central, obviously now with a slight bit of peripheral out here. But it was just, it was still just horrendous. Like I, it was useless, like completely not. Not enough fluid was dropping out. Anyway, when I went to see Professor Holmes in the follow-up appointment the following Monday after surgery, I went in and he went, surgery, superb. I've done, look, I've rebuilt you. Look, you look superb. And I was like, I know, I don't. it's great. Showed me all the pictures, amazing. It's like, thanks so much. I was like, you do know I can't see though. And he looked at me and I was like, I can't see. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, no, 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 I can't see it when I've done. So, okay, that's not my department, but we'll, we'll whip you across. So they whipped me across to the other side of the hospital. And I remember being taken into a room. They're like, we're going to scan your eye in a second. Take me into this room. And this chat was soulless. And he shows me two pictures. He's like, here's good eye, here's bad. It's like good eyes, like beautiful velvet sheets, like half smooth. And this literally looked like someone had got the other picture and just put, put a knife through in the middle of it. He was like, this one, not so good. I went, anymore? And he went, no, go and sit outside. Anyway, this couple of minutes before I was waiting to see see the doctor again felt like 15 years. It was a couple of minutes. Anyway, I got put in this room. Physio was with me at the time and sat next to me and doctor started speaking in obviously full medical terms. And it just didn't sound great, but I was clueless. I left school at 16, got two GCSEs. Clueless to what was going on. And I just said, can you put it in simple terms what's going on? You've got a test straight through the back of your retina. You won't see it again. Like, oh. And I just said, thanks. I cried. And I stood up and I walked out. I said, that's enough. I walked out the room, picked up the phone to my dad, crying my eyes out to dad. I, I ring uh, Old Brig, one of my best mates. He leaves work and he's meeting me where I'm staying at the time. He, he somehow, I rang to tell him I didn't know and he literally left work and was up there before I even got back. I got a two hour Uber ride home. 
I couldn't face ringing my mother. No one wants to give their mum bad news just to tell her that I'd never see out that eye again. I just couldn't do it. I said, don't bring mum. He was like, are you sure? Like, can't you do it? I was like, no, this one's not for me. I'll ring her later, but I need to. I sat in the car on the way home. I cried for two hours straight. Yeah.